uh, because Baba is here now, and uh, it's a honor to have him here. Uh, I've had always. Uh, I'd always wanted to ask you to come, sir. Mommy, so good to see you, man. You're welcome. I'd always wanted to ask you to come to Eagles Convention, but uh, I know your schedule. I know how clumsy it had been. So this year, I just felt we must make it happen. And I'm so happy that you could come. Uh, this is Eagles Convention. And most of the people you see are ministers from different organizations. They are not members of our church. Okay, we, we only came out here so that we can be out from the crowd, so that we can have some time to fellowship together. Uh, so, and they are, not, they are not all from Ibadan. People are from Kwara State, from Lagos State, from different, different places. Uh, Baba is, uh, there are plenty of things about him. So I'm trying to see where do I start from. <laughs> Baba is an academic. He's a, he's a, he's a lecturer. He was a lecturer. He was, he's always. He was a lecturer, a professor at Obafemi Awolo University. And, um, you will clap. You will clap. I just began. <laughs> okay, so he's, uh, he's been there for so many years. And um, he was a professor in uh, agric engineering. He was the head of the department. I think he was dean at a point. Then finally as the Deputy Vice-Chancellor at the name of OAU. If you don't know about the academic world, you don't know what that sounds like. That's the second person, second position in the university. Uh -huh. The Deputy VC. He was in charge of administration. That means every administrative aspect of the school was under his coordination. And um, that is very interesting, very important, because that means a lot of fun was under his control. And as a believer, he maintained uh, his integrity <laughs> over that period. <laughs> now, he is retired from the university because of age. Look at him, he's looking like a 20-year-old, 40-year-old man. He's approaching his 80th birthday very soon. Very soon. So, you can be sure that uh, <laughs> he may look young. It's because he's uh, faithful in managing his health, managing himself, managing. And mommy too is managing him very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You remember Baba Urioke was here yesterday? And I told you he's my father in the Lord. Okay. He's the general. Baba Urioke is the general overseer of Christ Way Ministries. And I served under him there. And he ordained me. But he did not ordain me alone. Yes, you are getting it right. When. I was ordained. Baba was the uh, assistant. Yes, he was assistant at that time. Assistant General Vasya of Christway. But you know why I respect him a lot? It's not easy to be second to you, somebody you, like, you are like uh, colleagues and you are older than and you submit to him for many years. And I pray the Lord himself will bless us. Well, uh, when I saw the thing you read, you said I should talk on 
consistency in life and ministry. Consistency in life and ministry. Uh, I'm very sorry because of the program we still have in Ife. I will rush so many things because we have a number of minutes we can spend here. I'm very, very sorry for that. Consistency in life and in ministry. Lord, I pray as we go into this your world, you will give counsel to every heart that is here. That making things to work the way you want and being consistent in whatsoever each one is doing for you, living the life that you want them to live, Father, make it easy for them in the name of Jesus. And I ask, oh Lord, you will make me your mouthpiece. That Lord, I will speak only that which you want your people to hear. And it shall be a blessing unto them. In Jesus' name, I prayed. So, consistency in life and ministry. The word consistency, what does it imply? The ability to maintain a particular standard or repeat a particular task with minimal variation. That is, you are doing something and uh, as you are doing it, only few variations can be noticeable. So when we are talk, when you are then talking of conf- consistency, it is a thing that must apply to the various issues of our life. We are not saying we want to be consistent in evil. We don't want to be consistent in doing evil. But consistent in doing things that are good. Consistent in doing things that will make us to make progress. Consistent in that which will make us to be successful and have breakthrough. And when it comes to the work of the ministry, consistent in that work of the ministry for food briony, food briony, and success in the work. Because this work is not, uh, well, it's not a question of uh, the government, you know, in our culture. There are some who are not, they don't have the right mind. They say, ah, and she share Obala Gun, Ejo, he she a chateau dara, and he share to buffet she, Ripo she, but he a she, Tobani di co la gun lorie, Tobani di co she wala, latile she to, etio mwe so wa, put it into it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, a person or group can be said to be consistent by what? By one, always having the same beliefs, behavior, attitude, quality, and so many others. It is the quality of always being the same or always being good. In life, there are those who are consistent in doing evil. Such as armed robbers, terrorists, kidnappers. They have no good other than evil. And they are consistent in doing this work. Consistency in doing good is what is appropriate 
for an effective, joyful, and peaceful life. Consistency is a great characteristic to build and to build and implement in your life. The key to consistency is no, the key to consistency is setting and achieving specific goals. You know, Anybody that has no goal in life, <laughs> such individual should not be a person that you will envy. Because a student that goes to school, there must be a goal he must put at the back of his mind that he will want to uh, achieve. A trader when we are coming, we saw a number of uh, uh, shops and market women with various uh, products they are selling. No matter what that individual is selling, they are, if he's somebody who is reasonable and who is progressive, he must have a goal, even in that work that he or she is doing. <laughs> Start by determining how you want to be more consistent in all areas of life including the Christian ministry consistency is very important and very relevant no matter what an individual like I said may be doing if he's a zigzag type of uh, activity that is pursuing is, is very, very difficult for you to be able to pinpoint success in the journey of such an individual. Now, let's consider consistency in life. The situation of things in life are often complicated and very erratic. That is, we don't have many things that are constantly permanent. At one time, at a time, you might feel sure that everything is perfect. But at another time, maybe next time, you might question everything that you have been doing. I pray that we will not uh, uh, have regret, but if we question so things that we are doing, we are trying to get improved in what we are doing. If you consider the Shunammite woman in the Bible, in Second Kings chapter four, if you read from verses six up to maybe twenty-six, he showed love to Elisha, and in the end, she had a baby boy. Very happy that I have this. But as time goes on, the baby died. I'm sure those, as ministers, it is not a strange story to us. At a time, she was happy that she had a result, a blessing from the love she showed unto the man of God. But we can say maybe God wanting to test and to see about this woman, the baby. You know what she did? She went 
without even uh, giving too much detail to the husband, went to look for the man of God. As she was going, he, the man of God saw her. He sent his uh, servant. Ah, that's that woman. Go and meet her. What is it? It's your, it's your husband, it's your, husband, your home, your, your child. What did she say? She said, it is well. You know, you want to maintain your joy. You want to maintain your success. There may be the need for you to fight against ne negativity or anything that will bring the negativity into the course of things. So, it is well was what she said. I try to imagine if it had to be another person as the, the servant is saying your, your home, your husband, your your saying so many things that are negative but it was when she got to the front of Elijah that she now expressed herself opened herself up Ah, and what happened the Lord restored that baby back to her I pray that the Lord himself will help every one of us that we will not walk in the path of failure. We will not walk in the path of destruction. There are many that are walking in such a path. It is you who will determine that you want to walk in the path of victory every time in your life. If you want to find consistency in life, you need to be consistent in your methods, your habits, and your ways of thinking. Your thinking should follow the path that will make you maintain that system that is consistent in it. You see, in life, there are so many people doing a particular thing, producing a particular thing or selling a particular thing uh, as in the Yoruba. You don't know what they are thinking about you. It is you that knows exactly what you are aiming at. You must trust in your God and maintain that which will cause you not to be thrown off balance in that which you are doing. I pray the Lord in which will help us in Jesus' name. It starts by building a more stable, consistent way of living for yourself and extends it outwards into other areas of your life. That book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 6 It says Let your speech Be always what? <laughs> be always be, be, be With grace Seizing with salt ah. So that What? You may know How to answer Every man in a situation where there is competition in the market you are used to, you need to maybe take to this counsel. Let your word be filled with grace. What you will speak, let it be with grace. Don't talk in a way that will appear as if you are trying to step down on that individual so that you may go up and he, may, he will go down. No. This God 
is a great God. He knows what you need. If you are a child of God, if you depend on God, if you call on God, He will show Himself great on your behalf. Now, developing habits for a consistent life. How do we develop the habit for a consistent life? Certain customs of uh, behaviors can help a person to live a consistent life. When one adheres to them, he or she will be able to show and live a consistent life. And what are those uh, lifestyles? Number one, Commit yourself to changes. If you believe that you just want to do or to go just in a direction, it may not be the best option. You must be ready to change when you are persuaded that change is necessary. And uh, <laughs> committing one cent to change, the first step to make any transformation in your life is to commit yourself to changes. That is making a conscious, willful declaration to yourself that you will stick it out and pursue your desired outcome ahead that can help keep you motivated and push you to achieve that goal which you have set for yourself. In life, everybody is just making effort doing things, and so on and so forth. And uh, why do we send p uh, children to school? You want them to acquire knowledge. You want them to acquire principles that they will be able to draw from what they are being taught. We are doing our own part as parents in the home. But we cannot do everything. We have a very great part, important part, but sending the children to go and study, there are so many things they will draw from that uh, experience. It is not only mathematics. It is not only all those theories they teach them in physics, in chemistry, and so on and so forth. There are things they will draw from the teaching the teacher is uh, imparting unto them. A, a teacher there are times you will make them to know what you have passed through so that it will be a lesson for them for them to be able to make a go ahead in life so it's important the way we have sent them to school and you will you will see that the parents were uh, I came from a, a family that is purely farmers in, in, in all ramification of life. None of my parents went to, to school. They only learned they, they taught them how to read Yoruba because of the Bible. In the, in the church, they learned how to read Yoruba Bible. But the school that I went made me to have greater idea than my parents. I used to tell parents in our church, if you don't start by praying that God will make your children greater than you, you have not been praying for them. Every Sunday in the, in the church that 
we attend most in Christ's way in Ilefe. The leaders in the children's uh, service, they have told me, I must be coming every Sunday to pray for these children. I was the one who started it. I used to go there every Sunday to go and pray for them. So they said I must not stop. What is it? That these children, their life will be better than our own. Their victory will be greater than our own. Their progress in life will be better. So, parents, make that your prayer for your children. They may not even be your children. Anyone, I I have told them, if I, I pray, you will be richer than me. If you are richer than me, does it make me become a beggar? No. Life will be better if we are all rich. Hello? And in particular, among Christians, because we have the mind of Christ, we will want to do what is right always. We will not use our money to afflict people. So let everybody be rich. I pray for you. You will not be poor. Poverty will not know your home. So let's continue to pray for our children. Pray for people in our churches. People around us. That life will be better for them. If the life is better for them, you you will also have your own relief and your peace. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, secondly, avoid, that is, things that you need for the development of the habits of consistent life. Avoid chaos or pandemonium. Some people become addicted to chaos, which can be just as damaging as addiction to drug or alcohol. These individuals crave what some call the the reliable unpredictable meaning that inconsistency is the only constant is the only constant in the person's life. That is the only thing that is available in the person's life is inconsistent. You see, uh, when you get to an environment, and in that environment, people have noticed a particular person or a particular family as a troublesome unit in that community. If you discover very well, you will see that these people that have been noticed or notable as chaotic people, their progress is nothing to write home about. They may do things that will cause people to say, ah, what is today? But when you talk of progress in life, it is always a thing that is absent most of the time on their own side. So, um, why it is a, is a good to pull uh, yourself out of rods by spicing things up in your life once a while? Chaos is any form, in any form, is very unstable and is not very suitable for long periods of time. <clears throat> there are certain notes I, I, I have here on this chaotic situation. One, there are many forms of chaos. It may involve erratic behavior, mood swings, of being being absorbed in other people's problems. But in often times, it's as a way of avoiding your own problem. Do you know that 
God is happy when we are in a position to be of help to others. I used to pray a prayer. Lord, bless me that I will be a blessing to other people. If you, if you are acquiring wealth just because you want to be notable, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, uh, six-story building is living, is living in the middle one. There are children of people in your community who want to go to school. The parents cannot send them to school. What is your contribution to the life of such people? You know, the contribution, the positive contribution to make to people we make to people's life is a thing that is being recorded by God in our favor. And uh, Christians, Ejo, we need to take things with greater seriousness in this present generation. What the apostles did in the book of Hans, that they said they had all things common. I was telling my people, okay, if there's any time we should do that, the present of Nigeria should cause us to do that. Do you see what is happening to people? Do you see the experience says that people are passing through on day-to-day basis? What are we doing about them? There may even be members of our own extended family that are involved. What is our contribution to lifting them up? I pray the Lord himself will have mercy on us and make us do what is right. (laughs) If you find yourself experiencing a lot of chaos in your life, step back and think about the ways in which you might be inviting or even pursuing that chaos. <laughs> the possibility that you are the one causing the chaos that you are experiencing in your life, in your home, in your work, can be your own contribution to things. The Lord Himself will help us in Jesus' name. It is impossible to have real consistency in your life if you if you keep cutting chaos. Only <laughs> by just as you resolved to find consistency, you must also resolve to resist chaos going forward. It can be in the family, it can be in the place of work, it can be within the community. You know, I live in a community where we every month we have meetings. We will plan how things will go well, how we will keep security secured, how we will contribute money to have uh, uh, night guards and so on and so forth. It is very important if you are involved in such a community, be a contributor to that progress. There are people, and I've challenged them. Uh-uh. It's not good. When you are in a community and they are pl- thinking of how things will be okay and you are not contributing to it, it is not good. It's not good enough. The Lord Himself will help us in Jesus' name. Thirdly, find a sense of purpose. Uh, you know, we are been uh, discussing on how we will be able to practice the habit of consistency. So the third step here is 
have a sense of purpose. Like I said earlier on, a student that goes to school, he has a purpose. A farmer that decided to go and buy some plots of land, some acres of land in a place, he has a purpose. I'm sure when you decided to buy, when this land was bought, there was a purpose. If it is left as it was when it was bought, will you, will you have the opportunity of being here? Will these structures be possible? So, it's not only having a purpose, but pursuing it is very, very important. And, uh, you know, <laughs> developing realistic goals based on your interests and your values or beliefs may help you. May help you figure out your life's purpose and get you started in transforming your life. Like I said, no one knows, I'm sure, where, Pastor Lowe, you may not know <laughs> the, the height that this system we get to. It is God who will be unfolding things according to his own purpose and will. And when he puts himself under the authority of that God, then you will be seeing the progress, the development, and so on. If you are getting surprised, ah, 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 the ah, ah is brought about by all the things that we, we, are, we are talking of. God making things happen to the individual who puts himself under his control. Getting yourself out of your comfort zone to experience to explore things that interest you is a good way to find your purpose. When you talk of comfort zone, zone, that is we are nothing, nothing. We, we we scratch we scratch them. That's what they want. If you say that you want to live in the comfort zone, you may not be able to get to where you uh, desire to get to. It is a thing that every individual must cause himself to follow. In the issue of... Uh, having a purpose here, yeah, let your values and beliefs guide you as you figure out what your life can become and what you can accomplish. Many a times there are those of us we don't we don't think too much ahead. I don't need to, to hide it that I was not I was not uh, in the mood that uh, one day I will become somebody very close to the authority at uh, OAU. But, but by the grace of God my determination has always been to live for God. To work for God. When the minute when Christ was started, I said, "I will leave uh, OAU 
I will go into full time ministry. And honestly, well, my students they know that uh, my own discipline to do my work and to serve God. My desire to say I want to go for full time work made me not to not to become a professor on time. I just, I left it something. If there is any program that uh, we started as Hospital Christian Fellowship, any program that was to be held by the Hospital Christian Fellowship, if it started with uh, if it's at the same time with a program that the university organizes in our faculty in the evening. I will go for the Hospital Christian Fellowship program. Because I have said that I will only stay there and work and collect some money for about three to seven years and I will leave. But it was God himself who led me to say you can serve me even still doing why you are still doing the work you are doing. So I thank God that I, I yielded to that uh, uh, instruction. Although it cost me a number of years of waiting. I have at least two students who became professors before me. But uh, although it has reason, that, like I wrote in my book that I wrote when I was returning. Somebody said, I will not become a professor. That if I want to become a professor, I should go to Lao Tech. Why? Because I was always against dishonesty. In the department, I don't support dishonesty. So, that person happened to be one of the juniors that became professor before me. And he made, he took a step. He even sent a pastor in Christ to tell me, Wait, tell your pastor, he cannot become a professor here, let him go to Lyle Tech. <laughs> For somebody to say that, He now became a dean and my paper for professorship was to be sent to people. So he went to them that they should not give me positive mark. Also did what his friend told him. He did not pronounce me a person to be made a professor. But you know, you know what happened? The fellow, he, when he was to retire, he now wrote, he, has, he never called me, he never sent a text to me, he now sent a text. It's still on, on my phone, the one I have at home. Appealing and begging that those he has offended, they should forgive him. A person who has never called me on the phone, who has never t- sent a text message, although he got to know that I've known that he was asked to fail me in my professor uh, in my professorship uh, uh, exercise. I think about uh, one and a half months later, <laughs> this man died, and I was just thinking, where God wanted him to repent or to apologize and so on. But the, the one who says I will not be a professor and was instigated. Lord Joy, I became the deputy vice chancellor. He still went to ask the vice chancellor, are there no other professors in the world? Ibi tu wanting lokaki ripe woni moke ah 
awon lo fi se akegun lati itemunle lati goke wo don let them practice wickedness be ready to find a way to make somebody to have easy life progressive life that is what god will use to make you to move up the lord will help you ah let me rush <laughs> now the fourth in our attempt to live the consistent life live a consistently healthy lifestyle that's number four live a consistently healthy lifestyle now consistency in life extends to your daily habits and routines living an unhealthy lifestyle is an invitation for inconsistency and chaos in your life that <laughs> one of the best ways to make your life more stable and consistent is to start with how you actually live your life on a day to day basis In addition, when you get your body moving, when you get your body moving, <laughs> your mind gets moving too. What does that entail? Number one, how? Make physical activity a part of your everyday life. Uh, well, there are those who jokingly speak in Christ's way. Uh, it be, uh, Pastor, you don't look your age. So, I used to tell them, they, there is a, a senior citizen. When you are 60 and above, you are a senior citizen. But I told them, I'm, I'm not a senior citizen. I'm a senior youth. Every morning, well, today, my wife knows that, uh, I did not do my work. But every day, I, once we finish our prayer in the morning, I go out, I walk at least four kilometers, come back home. And I discovered that I've read about it. I discovered that it's very, very helpful unto me. Well, you are putting your nerves under tension that it will get weakened very easily. Well, people see me in the morning. I have a, a spring loaded uh, uh, item on my right hand and on my left hand. I press it, it will remove this arthritis uh, feeling in the hand that money away. Oh, 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 So, please, let's develop that attitude. Secondly, Eat at regular intervals and follow a balanced diet. <clears throat> but one thing that is very, very important. Well, thank God, my wife is here. Don't overeat. Since 1969, I've been eating twice a day. That was before I got married. So when I got married, ah, my wife saw the habit. She entered jail with a man who looked human. At the meeting, we jail with a meji. She, I challenged them at the campground uh, of Christway. When we were talking, I said, "Okay, let." All of us, let's run to 
the uh, general I mean the OAUTHC, the hospital in Ife, I'm back to become grand. They say, Money no Melo no alone she walk, Melo no alone sorry. Anyway, only only Badi Geshi, Pastor Badi Geshi, he used to run. But all the other ones, what do they do? Egg hey, let's put our body not where. Anyway, uh, as for the women, uh, uh, the belief is Bobo Bashan in the kitchen, and in Nani, but Koti Buruju, Tabaton Fini, dear Sinita. It's good, though. It's good, though. The Lord will help us. <laughs> then, <coughs> where? Avoid smoking or quit it if. You are currently a smoker. Emma Moti, Emma Moti, Giga. Another thing: resist extreme binges, both in eating habit and in drinking. Shora kwelu aje aje amuju. You see. I had to, I surprised uh, certain people. You know, I belong to a governing council in one of the military institutions. And uh, when they want to serve, they will just bring the plate for meat. They say, ah, chairman say something. They will, they will put the meat, the chicken or turkey, they will put it in the, they, they cover it. So I will Madam, please come. I will just to take one there, put it on my rice or whatsoever the food is. Please take the rest away. That is my own discipline. I don't eat as if, uh, when you get to a place and they feed, they put the meat there. Yeah, and so, don't say because ah, no. No. It's not the right thing. It's not the right thing. <laughs> Make sure you get enough rest each night. That is the last thing I want Rest very well. Hey, Our body is not a stone. You know, when you throw a stone, it's the stone that will injure whatsoever it, it hits. Your body, if you hit it against obstacle, against hard thing, it is your body that will suffer for it. Let us give this body rest. Sleep very well. Well, in the last few days, I had to be doing some things that take me to after 10 or after 11. I, I don't like it. Well, the medical people, they advise us we should have at least 6, 7, or 8 hours of sleep every night. Well, and you're my way. I don't know whether you can whether you can have that uh, but rest as well you must rest now the third aspect here consistency in ministry the one we have been talking has to be with general life consistency in ministry consistency is the most important part of your ministry as a Christian the surface adherence to the same form, cause, principles, or doctrines. Basically, consistency is about being committed to a course of action. You can it's possible for you to have an incredible plan. For ministry. 
But if you don't consistently adhere to it, you don't pursue it, <laughs> it is of no value. For somebody to say, yes, yeah, I will do this, I will do this. If you don't do it, <laughs> the result that you feel you should get if you do it, you will not have it. It is important to note that the key to success in ministry is that being the leader, you have to be consistent in four key areas. Number one, consistent in yourself. That is who you are. Don't live a life that people you see, is it the same uh, Pastor Ajayi that is, that is doing this? Let them know you as somebody is very, very important. Secondly, consistent in your message. You will not talk of positive things that will make people grow today and another time they see you saying things that we derail them as Christian. Thirdly, consistent in your method. Your method of getting things done. In fact, there are ways by which people shut themselves out of success because of the way they are putting things forward. A leader that does not know how to get people's interest to doing what they want to do, it will be very difficult for him to be a successful leader. And then fourthly, consistent in your motivation. Now, the way we were brought up in those days by the scripture union, they, fight, they teach us ways by which you can talk to people about the gospel in a way that we interest them. Making them to see it as something that God designed for them and a life they need to follow. There is the need for us to examine the way we are getting things done and to change when we know it is not earning us the necessary benefit and the necessary result. Now, under this consistency in ministry, first thing, what consistency in ministry entails? What does it entail? Number one, avoiding negligence of the needed principles. Avoiding negligence of the needed principles. Kayerafun. Avoiding. Oh, Kama Yerafun Awan into Yekatele. Second Timothy chapter chapter one, verses five to eight. Second Timothy five. I mean, one rather. Second Timothy one, five to eight. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Louis and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also, 
Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up that word, stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Now, that word in verse 2, stir up, uh, what is the Yoruba for stirring up? Rules okay. Now, when you don't stir up, even you 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 have an idea. If you don't put it into action, the rules okay here yeah, is taking action to make it function. If you don't, it will be of no profit. There will be nothing that will come out of it. Now, secondly, what consistency in ministry entail? On in that focus on one's calling. Have you been called? You want to ensure that you don't deviate from your calling. There is no doubt that the fact that you are a pastor does not mean that you cannot do other things. I used to tell people I have never received a salary from Christ's way ministry. Although when there is Christmas or uh, the people in the church they will bring gift. Maybe I've taken that as a salary. Uh, yes, because I'm working. As, I mean, why should they be paying me? I'm not on full time work in the church. I put myself into it. So it's a thing that we develop in our own ministry. You are not a full time something. Uh, there are things that will come to you as just gift. You must not you must not grumble about it. Because there are so many things money will be used for in the work of the ministry. Uh, but we also discover that it is the pastors that are contributing more to the financial need of the church. Uh, because at least many in the church, they feel they are not financially capable. But you cannot force them. In a church where they, you know, you don't need to harass people before they give to the Lord. It, sh it should be very voluntary. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. It is uh, <laughs> we, we, we should not doubt what God can do. What Paul was telling Timothy in that second Timothy uh, it's very, very important for us to, to, to endure. In chapter 4 of that same uh, pass, and that same Second Timothy, if you read from verses 6 to 8, he's saying the same thing concerning the work that has been given to him and the spirit that he has imbibed. He should make it to work. What is the benefit of somebody speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, and is not involved in other things that can make the ministry to go. Is not involved in soul winning, in evangelism. 
please, in our various ministries or churches, I don't know, we should be challenging ourselves by asking the question, are we really moving forward? Or we are stagnant? Or are we drawing back? I have challenged my people that we have not been as vibrant as we used to be 30 years ago. Pastor Lohoyo, you will remember there used to be evangelism to the heart of Ife. Evangelism to the back of the Oba's house and so on and so forth. It is the thing that I'm challenging our people. Why don't we continue it? Why are we not doing it? Is it because we have become big? Uh, <laughs> I mean, what we are doing, all the people knew us in Ilef at that time. Evangelism to Eleyele, before Eleyele Church started, you remember? Because I, I knew you were in Eleyele one time. Oh, no, 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 Ina in soji, ninu in joy, kolu akotunda. Now, the third thing here, constant dependence on the master who has called you. <laughs> that First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-four. Verse 24. He says, Faithful is the one that called you and will do it, who also will do it. Imply the thing, the purpose, your aim, your desire to increase the things in your church, to bring more people into the household of God. This God is faithful to get it done. But the part you need to play, you cannot fold your hand and say it will be possible. No. 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 Now, steps to maintaining consistency in ministry. What are those steps that are needed? I will quickly go through it. Number one, dependence on the word of God. <clears throat> Dependence on the word of God. <clears throat> know it, preach it, and teach it. What you don't know, you cannot teach. What you don't know, you cannot preach. So, there is a need to know it. John chapter 5 verse 39. You are searching the scripture. Why? Okay. Somebody can help us read it. John 5 39. Search the scripture for him then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because and they There is the need for us to take the scripture ah, with seriousness and meditate in it. In those days, we were the scripture union of Nigeria taught us no Bible meditation, no breakfast. And since that 1969 I'm telling you before God that is my principle how, how will I say I want to go and eat when I've not eaten the word of God it is very very helpful 
you see, that is what we are saying. Those things that we were, we were fed with are very, very helpful unto us. We have a, 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 young, a young person living us. I, I was telling him how we are told to memorize the Bible. You know, the, the scripture we knew, we say, just mention it five times. John 3, 16. You read it. You read it. At the end of your reading, you will mention again John 3, 16. That is number one. Secondly, John 3, 16. You read it. When you finish, you mention John 3, 16. Third time, John 3, 16. Read it. After. Mention John 3. You do that five times. You will dis- that time, when the brain is still very, very young, very fresh, before you finish that five, you will discover that a lot of the thing already there. If you repeat it the following morning, ah, our duro gidi But we don't teach that any longer. People are not even not memorizing the scripture any longer. How is that will a man, young man make his way perfect by taking it according to your word? Those are the things we are asked to memorize. And we have memorized this thing then and it's still there. The Lord will help us. <laughs> Secondly, obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 9. Where will shall a young man <laughs> oh yeah oh okay the Yoruba I don't know whether we read it in here. Where will shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word. And when It is a thing, you know, how many of our young people memorize such? How many of our young people have memorized John 3.16? And so on and so forth. <laughs> we, just like I was talking about the situation in the government concerning our road and so on. Those things that they were doing in those days to make our environment clean. Wole wole. Ona wala wangwa ya bi ona wala wo. Ni isi. Ni le tango ya bagba. Oju akbara ni wanda si. Ah. Oju oku kuro. Mba toju ba aro. O wa non ro si ibi kan. Iba ti be ba wa di. Akbara wa ya. See in only. Onu ana wa lowo. There are traditions that we have forgotten, and they are making things difficult for us. Way of progress seem to be hindered or obstructed because we are no more going that way. <laughs> Number three. Know your calling and pursue it faithfully. First Corinthians chapter four. The first two verses there. As I made it to show you. First Corinthians four. And it expected at a in that he must be found faithful. That aspect is very, very important. Faithfulness. <laughs> Obedience. Faithfulness. <laughs> to the word of God is very, very important. And then, know your calling and pursue it faithfully. 
Paul reminds Timothy of the gifts given to him for the ministry and orders him never to neglect his calling in that second Timothy 1 1 to 12. You, you have time, you, you read it. Which is to remain in and teach the pattern of sun instruction or sun doctrine Timothy received from the apostle himself. I pray that the Lord will help us so that we will give the right principle to our people so that they will follow and live for the Lord rightly and faithfully. Number four, avoiding distraction. Distraction. First John 2.15 15. <laughs> He says we should not love the world. Love not the world. What are the things of the world? If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He now lives. All that is in the world, the lot of the flesh, the lot of the eye, and the pride of life, they are not of the Father, but of the world. And what happened? The world passes away and the Lord there. The love of the world is a distraction to the minister of God. You are thinking about what you will teach your people. And you now see things that will cause you to be saying, ah, in this present time in which we are, can this, can this thing be possible? How will it not be possible? The fact that things are going upside, upside down, does not mean that we cannot live the Christian life. There are people who feel, uh, yes, uh, he's our leader, our leader. In your own corner, what do you do? Well, there is no doubt that only those who are sure they are following the course of the Lord that will be able to open their mouth and, and talk. In the general public, I, I, when, I, when they were trying to send me forth in, uh, at OAU, I, I, I called all the contractors. You, they were under me. Any of you that have connived with to dupe the university or the government money. Please say it. Say it. About about two weeks ago, I I said the same thing in a place where I I, I was to live as their chairman. <laughs> I've said it in the public. If there is anybody that have collected money from or that have used Awurumaje to draw out of the money for the contract, go to the EFCC, ask them to come and arrest me and beg them. When they arrest me, let them tie my hand and my leg. And I've told my people in the church, if you hear that EFCC in my house. Just come with your phone and show, just take the photograph of whatsoever they are doing to me. After the, after the program, because I have told them I will become a multimillionaire because uh, what's the name? This human rights uh, fellow Falana, where we discussed sometime when he came for it, is the one that we made my lawyer. If there is that photograph, it will be very good. We had to tie my hand and my leg. Ah, whoa. I will just tell him, please, I don't know how much we take, but from this case, I want 200 million. Because the photograph will be all over the world. I've been praying him. 
since the last four years, it appears God has not answered my prayer. <laughs> Brethren, we children of God, we are the people that can make the right thing happen in our land. What we are passing across to our members are they living by the standard? A fellow was caught. He happened to be somebody that I know very well. He, he, he was arranging on the phone with a contractor. And that you had, this is this. The one you are adding is my own. He has already given them an amount he will collect from them before, but they should add to this Okay, the that contract there, add to this, add this one, is my own. He never knew that the contractor was recording it. The thing is on my phone. And uh, when he when he was called to uh, to question, he came to me because my father was born. In, I mean, my father's mother was born in the house where he, he came from. So he, he said, he will, he's begging me that I should, as the chairman of the council, I should uh, please tell them they should forgive him. I said, well, I'm not the singular power in that council. I'm only the chairman. Go and meet all others. Whatever they say, I will just beat the table approved. That's all. But because he could not go to them, he now begged me. He went to the Oba in our place. What will I what will I do? A hey, Joe, let us live a life that you will be able to raise up your head anywhere. Every Christian can do what the Lord wants them to do. Ah, my people, this country will be better. This country will get to the height that will surprise everybody. The Lord will help us. Oh. The unfortunate thing, even in the church, people are stealing money. They will ask somebody to be the secretary of a particular group. And the person will be using the money collected from other members for his own uh, uh, <laughs> need. Uh, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, uh, <clears throat> number five. I mean, sorry. Yes, number, uh, number five. Total commitment with no looking back. Hebrews chapter 10 38 to 39 Be fully committed and don't look back. It is very, very important. Ah, okay. Number 6 Desiring the support of other faithful believers. In terms of prayer, you know, Colossians chapter 4 3 to, f- to 4. Colossians 4. 3 to 4. You will see how that Paul was asking for prayer. We, we should be in a position that others will be able to pray for us in the thing we are doing. Christians should be able to walk hand in hand and help each other in prayer. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And number uh, 6. <coughs> Be a good manager of time. Hey, Joe, it is very, very important. A church was to start in an environment and they invited people. On the day of the opening of the church, for one reason or the other, the leader of the church and the other members, they did not show up at the time they gave. So the people that have been waiting, they just went back home. 
with the promise that they have nothing to do with them again. What is that? It's a failure. It's a retardant. Retard, I mean, no matter what, it will retard them. Ewo, there are people in the world can do uh, can, don't believe in this so-called African time. I tell people, there is no one in Christ's way that can challenge me of late coming to anything that I, I, I'm a late comer. No. No. Uh, if they said the service is 10 o'clock, it is not quarter to 10 that you will now be saying, oh, I, I, I will eat. I, what have you been doing from 6 a.m.? To, to, to 9 o'clock. If you say in your home, you want to pray by uh, 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 8.30, it is not 25 after 8 that you will now be doing things that will make you shoot over the time and you will not be able to do the prayer. It's not a good thing. It is not a good thing. The Lord will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. And uh, when we look at <laughs> so many things that do happen to people, we should not waste their time. Like we were taught when I was in school. When you are late for 10 minutes, and you met 20 people. <laughs> ah, the <laughs> it is 20 times 10 that have been wasted. Not just your own 20 minutes. <laughs> you know how many man hour that one is. If we are able to do what we want to do, you can uh, on time you will have time to do more things there are so many things we need to do in the day you don't need to waste time to cause you not to be able to do other things than the force that you have to do the lord will help us now what are the rewards of consistency in ministry i want us to rush it number one blessings or reward. Fruit bearing is there for us to experience. Consistency in evangelism, in soul winning, in teaching the people and the organizing program that will benefit with people will cause you to have fruits that we abound. John chapter 15. If you read the first five verses there, the Lord is encouraging us as divine. And we branches, we need to get ourselves glued to Him so that we'll be able to bear fruit. When the branch of a tree is cut, that, man, that mango there, if you cut a branch, that branch, you can never get mango fruit from it any longer. That is it. With the Christian, when he cuts himself away from the Lord. Number two, eternal life is secured. John chapter 4, 35 to 36. Please put it down. Number three, greater works and answers to prayers will be possible. John chapter 14, 12 to 14. Jesus has talked of greater works and this shall we do. If you are consistent in following him and doing what he has ordered you. And number four, which is the last, Progress in ministry will be certain. So, when we look at all these things, we want to 
maybe have time to sit down and ask ourselves, do we have situation of retardation or stagnancy in our life or in our ministry? Things that we need to examine are the one that we have mentioned. Now, in conclusion, basically, consistency is about being committed to a course of action. You can have an incredible plan for ministry. But if you do not consistently adhere to that plan, it is of no value. You can have amazing systems in place. But if those steps are not carried out, that system is nothing more than a document or a document on your write-up or a piece of paper. Consistent action is the foundation of a fruitful ministry. There are countless books and articles written that are designed to help you grow your church. These secrets themselves vary widely depending on who is writing them. Some people believe it's all about being on the cutting edge that is doing things sharply. While others believe it's about sticking to the tradition that our ministries were founded on. Some people believe the key is attracting the right kind of people While others believe it's about hiring the right staff. No matter what we have in mind, the most important thing is this. Those things that we consider and we believe will help us Let us be consistent in pursuing them, living by them. And you want to live long in life. All the things that have to do with your health, you must not take it as don't take it as a joke. Take it with all the seriousness that it involves. Because the issue of even success in ministry <laughs> is affected by your health and the way you do the work. I pray that the Lord himself will help us that we will live long and be useful vessel in the hand of our creator. I don't know, do you say that?